Welcome to Good Evening KU. I'm your host, Tyler Ramundo. I'm your other host, Cade Carlson. And Cade, how about those Jayhawks? Undefeated. Undefeated now. Uh, the Jayhawks, for them, this was our second season in a row, starting off 4-0. The first time we have done that in back-to-back -back seasons since the 1913 and 1914 seasons, which is 110 years ago. That's quite a long time. How are you feeling about that win? Um, it felt good. BYU was a very good team. And uh, obviously, we have a very, very tough competition next week against number three, Texas. Um, I do think we have a shot, though. I, I don't think in previous years, you know, when you, when you see Kansas play Texas, it's not our ideal matchup. But I think, I think there's a chance this year. Two sure. years ago. Two, two years, years ago. ago. So. Upset in Austin. All right. Well, uh, three KU sports teams are now ranked. Our volleyball team is ranked at number 19. Women's golf team is ranked at 18. And the football team is, of course, ranked at number 24. How are you feeling about all of our ranked teams now? I think it's good. I think it's good that we have notoriety too in other smaller sports. Like volleyball is getting more popular, but our women's golf team, like that's not something that's talked about on campus. Mm -hmm. And I think that now that we're ranked in there, I think it might get some more buzz. So that's that's very exciting. Like last week, talking about women's sports growing, mm -hmm. they definitely seem to be growing, especially on campus. Uh, Colorado versus Oregon, another very notable football game happened over the weekend with Coach Prime. Uh, Colorado did suffer a very big loss at the hands of Oregon, 42-6. to six. Did you see anything on that game you thought was interesting? I'll be honest, I turned it off after the first, like, <laughs> 10 minutes because it was a blowout. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my biggest thing, right, is we're going with conference realignment, and the Pac-12 is becoming the Pac-2. But they've had at least six teams ranked every week this year, and UCLA and uh, Colorado dropped off. But Washington is currently ranked at 7, USC at 8, Oregon at 9, Utah at 10, Washington State at 16, and Oregon State at 19. That's six teams that are ranked, and four of those teams are gone next year, and the only teams remaining are Washington State and Oregon State. And so what are your thoughts on conference realignment, especially in the Pac-12? Well, two teams from the Pac-12 are coming to, out of those six, two of those are coming to the Big 12 next year. So that's something that will immediately affect us. Mm -hmm. So. Colorado, another team that has a lot of buzz around it right now. That'll bring a lot, a lot of popularity to the Big 12, especially depending on whether we're going to play them at home in the booth or we're going to play them in Boulder. But that'll definitely be an interesting matchup, something that we can look forward to. And then Utah, another team who's been at the top of college football for a majority of this year right now. Obviously, they're at number 10, so another very... Very yeah, and, and I think good any, program. any of those, Washington, USC, Oregon, and Utah, any of those can compete for a national championship. I would not write any of them off. They've all looked really good this year. Um, one interesting thing to note with conference realignment is the travel time. Like, for example, Was Washington next year is traveling like to Maryland to play conference games. And I think that's so crazy that the original use for conference realignment was for academics, was for um, like geography, and I feel like it's not becoming like that anymore. Um, most TV contracts after this year expire in the in the 2030s, so there may not be as much conference realignment. However, because the TV contract ended in 2024, all these teams are are just uh, just dispersing. So A it's purge. very interesting to see. Um, what else? What else you got for us, Kate? Uh, well, I know that you have been dealing with the holiday today, so if you want to tell more, tell us more about that holiday. Um, well, yeah. So for all my uh, my Jewish, Jewish friends out there, it is uh, Yom Kippur today. So I currently have not had anything to eat or drink since <laughs> about 5.45 last night. And uh, I'm struggling. But um, yeah, it's, it's uh, one of the biggest holidays of the year. Um, last week, Rosh Hashanah was the Jewish New Year. And for the next 10 days, God was writing about our, our fate. And today, our fate is sealed for the year. And um, yeah, so uh, it was also the day where we, had, uh, we waited 40 days and then there was a golden calf, and uh, we observed the, go the golden calf. Moses smashed the tablets, and um, yeah, so that's why I'm not eating today. But um, bet you're looking forward to that first meal and you don't glass understand. of water. You don't understand. <laughs> um, and no, yes. Um, and then other news. Um, obviously, there's Taylor Swift at the Chiefs game. And um, can you name how many of Taylor Swift's exes? Can you name? I would not be able to name definitely as many as other people would, but I have a couple of them in my mind. <laughs> All right. L list them. Let's see what you got. Oh, well, 
looking at the list, all I really know is like Harry Styles, Jake Gyllenhaal, you know, the basics. The, ba the, basics. the basics. Taylor Lautner. Yeah. Um, Joe Jonas. Uh, why I know this, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, I think that's all we have for us. Um, next up, we have an interview with Laura and the uh, College and Career Fair. So. <laughs> later. What's up KU? I'm Laura Bierkons here with Steve Roddinghouse, which is the career and outreach coordinator for the KU College Fair. Yep, well, er, thanks for having me. Career Fair, my bad. <laughs> So, um, I hear the career fair is, this one is in the J school this year, or one of them. So, do you want to tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, we're three weeks away, October 19th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. here at Stauffer Flint Hall. We'll have about 30 companies uh, from Topeka, Wichita, Kansas City. We have an alum coming in from Chicago. So, pretty much everything you can think of tied to the J school curriculum will be represented between uh, news publications, marketing, public relations, advertising, sports media. Um, they, they should all re be represented that day. Cool. Is there any like major um, companies that most people know about that will be showing up? Probably the two popular ones are Trasolo Communications out of Kansas City and Signal Theory. They also have a, a Kansas City office and a Wichita office. Um, those are always pretty popular. Um, we'll have the Lawrence Times and Lawrence in the World from Lawrence here. We'll have um, about three or four KC TV stations, a couple from Wichita and a couple from Topeka. But again, pretty much everything you can think of tied to journalism will be represented here. That's cool. Um, so what should someone like wear to this kind of thing? I always want students to treat this like a potential interview. Business casual, at the very least. You don't want to wear the hooded sweatshirts, the sweatpants, the yoga pants. Um, yeah, you want to dress to impress, I mean, mm -hmm. like you would for an actual interview. It's great to make professional communications. And um, I also say bring some resumes. Try to have about a dozen resumes with you. If you have one of those nice pad folios, you know, like with kind of a notebook with kind of a leather cover, I always think those are, that's classy to bring. If you don't have one of those, just some sort of folder to kind of control all your resumes. Yeah. Um, so is it sort of like an interview or is it like just getting to know the company? Like what's the vibe of like what's happening at the fair? It's more get to know the company. It's more like an informational session where I always want students to know a little bit about the company and what they're looking for. But most of all, it's they want to get to know the students just as much as mm -hmm. you want to get to know the company. Um, the, it's pretty common for an employer to say, so what are your interests? And the student will say, oh, I want to do broadcasting. And they'll say, okay, we've got these kind of opportunities here at this location. Uh, but yeah, it's more of an informational session where the company kind of promotes their internships and jobs. Um, it's, it's not really meant to be any sort of interview. It's just get to know these companies and they'll say, hey, stay in touch. Here's our deadline to apply for internship or entry level position. Gotcha. So is there like um, a majority of students like come out with an internship or a job out of this or is it more just like you said like an interest sort of thing? Yeah, we do have quite a few students that do get an internship or a job because of this. Um, but more than anything, I mean, I want all students to show up. You don't have to be a junior or senior to be there because mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a lot of value in just starting that professional networking early in your college career. Um, for example, if you show up as a freshman, you don't know exactly what you want to do. You make a connection like, wow. That is exactly what I want to do, but the timing's not quite right for me, internship or job. Make that connection, circle back again a year from, from now and say, hey, I thought about what you said, you know, at the fall 23 uh, career fair. This is what I've been doing since I talked to you. And then it can kind of take off from there. That's, that's very, <laughs> sorry, very informational. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of just like, it's, it can be a beginning for underclassmen mm -hmm. or like you can set something up for upperclassmen, that kind of thing. Yeah, correct. Because I know a lot of underclassmen might not know exactly what they want to do. 
but hopefully an event like this can give a little more clarity to it where it's like, oh, I never knew that job existed, but after talking to that professional, um, I, I think that's the route I want to take. Yeah. So is this the only career fair on campus or do you think I mean, there's multiple? Others? Yeah, there's multiple career fairs throughout the year. I mean, like a business school does one, engineering does one. Journalism, we always do one in October and then our next one will be in March. And the March one's just a little bit bigger because I think it um, is more um, timely for the recruitment cycle for a lot of companies. Um, but yeah, that'll be actually I take that back. That's February 29th. I forgot to sleep here. So our spring one will be in February. OK, gotcha. Well, I think that's all we have time for. Do you have anything you'd like to add before we go? Oh, one more thing. Um, we will have a professional photographer there to take headshots. So if you need a new LinkedIn profile photo, a photo for your website, um, we'll have that. And we'll also have a resume breakout room. So some professionals throughout the day, they'll be re reviewing resumes in real time. So I want students to take advantage of that as well. Cool. Well, um, thank you for joining me. Um, let's see, we are gonna take a break and then come back with the news. Welcome back. I'm Orly. And I'm Katie. And this is your Monday Good Morning KU News Update. Tropical Storm Ophelia hit the East Coast over the weekend, but was not as strong as forecasters had predicted. Heavy rain, strong winds, and storm surges affected North Carolina to the New Jersey shore, but there were no reported tornadoes or deaths as of Monday morning. A 13-foot alligator was killed by authorities in a central Florida waterway after the remains of a dead homeless woman were pulled from the water. According to news reports from the station WFLA, a witness saw the gator holding onto the body of 41-year-old Sabrina Peckham and pulling it underwater. The size of the alligator is just five inches shorter than the state record, a 14-foot, three-and-a-half-inch beast found in 2010. Eight-time Grammy Award-winning singer Usher is set to be headlining the tw 2024 Super Bowl halftime show at Las Vegas Allegiant Stadium on February 11th. While he made an appearance at halftime in 2011 with the Black Eyed Peas, this will be the first time appearing as a headliner. Twelve CVS pharmacies in Kansas City closed unexpectedly over the weekend after a staged walkout by pharmacists. The protest claims that declining working conditions, including reduced support staff hours, are the reason for the walkout. According to the Kansas City Star, most of the affected pharmacies are located inside local Target stores. A possible revenge shooting has led to the arrest of 38-year-old Travis Charles Kopp of Perry early Sunday morning in North Lawrence. Kopp has been charged with attempted first-degree murder after police tracked him down in Lecompton after the two witnesses called in a shooting near the Berry Plastics plant just north of the Kansas Turnpike. According to the Lawrence Journal World, the incident may be connected to a September of 2022 shooting on West 24th Street in Lawrence. Students in the Lawrence School District will have to be more careful if they are using artificial intelligence apps like ChatGPT to do their homework. District officials have purchased a computer program called Gaggle, which is designed to monitor what students write, send, and search for, and then examines the results for warning signs. The software will only monitor devices that are owned by the school district. A long-awaited sample from a new Earth asteroid is about to land in the U.S. According to CNN, an asteroid sample stowed inside a NASA spacecraft is about to reach Earth after traveling for nearly two and a half years across space. It's NASA's first time collecting and returning an asteroid sample from space. Teams have been rehearsing how to retrieve the sample, originally coll collected from the near-Earth asteroid Bennu, when it dropped down into the Utah desert yesterday. New influenza and COVID-19 vaccines are now available according to the Lawrence Douglas County Public Health Office. Vaccines are available beginning today at the clinic at 200 Main Street and a variety of community vaccination events are being planned for the near future. Dating rumors involving the NFL player and the pop superstar emerged after Travis Kelsey tried to shoot his shot with Swift at the Eras Tour in July. The pop star made a surprise appearance at the NFL players game at Arrowhead Stadium yesterday. Swift enthusiastically cheered for Kelsey and his Kansas City Chiefs, 
while seated next to his mom, Donna. The Chiefs beat the Bears 41-10 and play the New York Jets away next Sunday. For more in sports, let's, let's toss it over to Federico. Thanks, Jonna. The football team is now 4-0 as the Jayhawks defeated BYU 38-27 in the Big 12 conference opener for both teams. The Cougars led by three at the half, but the second of two defensive touchdowns on the first drive of the third quarter gave the Jayhawks the lead for good. Offensively, wide receiver Luke Grimm caught two touchdown passes from Jalen Daniels. The team will travel to Austin, Texas this weekend for a matchup with the Longhorns. Kickoff is set at 2.30 p.m. on ABC. The volleyball team opened conference play with a split at Texas Tech. The Red Raiders won in five sets on Friday night, but KU responded with a straight set sweep on Saturday to even the series. Transfer Reagan Cooper led the Jayhawks with 13 kills. Kansas is now 10-2 overall and will host Houston this weekend at Horace Family Volleyball Arena. And the soccer team had a rough weekend, losing to UCF on Sunday 1-0 on a late penalty kick after losing to Oklahoma State on Thursday, 1-0. KU Soccer is now 3-3-5 and 0-2-1 in Big 12 Conference play. They'll host Baylor on Thursday night at Rock Chalk Park. The football team made the AP Top 25 rankings after their Saturday victory against BYU. KU came in at number 24 and is the third team for the Big 12 Conference, along with number 3 Texas and number 14 Oklahoma. This marks the third fall sports team to be ranked within the top 25 in their field. Volleyball is ranked number 17 in their rankings, while women's golf is number 18 in the latest golf week rankings. In the pros, the Miami Dolphins nearly set an NFL record Saturday after their 70-20 victory against the Denver Broncos. They set a franchise record for most points scored in a game and were three shy of breaking the league record, which came in 1940 when the Chicago Bears prevailed against Washington 73-0 in the NFL title game. Miami's 70 points are fourth most in a game and most since Washington's 72 against the Giants in 1966. Miami scored 10 touchdowns with quarterback Tua Tagovailoa leading the way with 309 yards and four touchdowns. Devin Archain and Raheem Mostert each found the end zone four times, amounting for 48 total points. With two minutes left in the fourth quarter, Miami found themselves on Denver's 23-yard line on a first and 10. A field goal would tie the game a field goal would tie the record for most points in a game, but head coach Mike McDaniels decided to forego the scoring opportunity and return the possession to the Broncos to seal the 70-20 final score. That's it for sports. After the break, we're going to have another interview with Dulce, and we'll be here with the weather. Miss the bus again? Yeah. You should download my bus, Lawrence. You can see when buses are arriving here, and you can also see where the buses are in Lawrence. Wow, okay. Download the My Bus Lawrence app today. Welcome back. Um, I'm back with another guest, Sutton Richardson, one of my very close friends, and she's going to tell us about a little bit of her involvement on KU's campus. So, what are you involved in on campus? I'm involved in the KU club women's soccer team, and I'm also involved in the sorority Cap Alpha Theta. Cool. Um, so how did, did you get involved with those in the first place? Both of those were very heavily advertised on KU social media. So through Instagram, I found both Rush, and I also found the Google Form tryouts for KU club soccer. Cool. Um, do you have a preference on which you like better? I don't know. No, I can't pick. I love them both. They've both been a great way to get involved and make a very large campus feel a lot smaller. It's cool walking around campus and seeing people, and it was also super duper easy to get involved in both of the things. Good. So everyone should know that it's easy to get involved on yes. campus. So. Yes. Um, so club soccer, that sounds fun. How um, does that go? So we started off with a couple of kick arounds, and then we also had a first week of tryouts. And then after tryouts, we found out if we made the team. And through that, I found a ton of friends. And I've also found people with the same major as me, which has been really cool for study groups. What's your major? Um, exercise science on the pre-PA track. Does that have anything to do with sports? Or is that more just like pre-med stuff? It's been more pre-med stuff. Soccer has just been something that I've grown up playing. So I obviously wanted to find a way to play soccer throughout my life because it just wasn't something I was ready to give up on yet. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. What else? What's... Um, so, 
sorry, the basketball team. Yes. A, so you're for both freshmen. Neither of us have been to a basketball game yet. Um, are you excited? Yeah, I am super excited. So I've been to a couple of basketball games with my dad. So I haven't been this year, obviously, but I'm super excited because obviously Allen Fieldhouse is an environment like no other. And sitting in the student section this year is something I'm really excited about. Yeah, we've been to a couple of football games. They have been really fun, yeah. a little hot, but we are both very excited to get involved with the basketball games and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think that's all we have time for. Thank you for joining me. Yes. And now we're going to go to Dulce with the weather. Good afternoon, Jayhawks. Right now, we are currently seeing clear skies with a couple of clouds in the background. Right now, Lawrence is at 84, Kansas City 83, and Topeka at 84 degrees. We are seeing some activity towards Chicago and Texas as well, but luckily none of that is going to affect us. It seems like they're going north and eastbound. For today, we are seeing 86 degrees with sunny skies and light wind with no chance of rain. For tonight, we're seeing 84 degrees and towards uh, the nighttime, we're seeing low 70s and low 60s with light wind as well. For tomorrow, we're seeing sunny skies with a high of 84 and calm winds rolling in through the morning with light wind as well. And for the rest of the week, we are seeing 85, 82. Thursday and Friday, high 90s with high winds as well. And then towards the afternoon for Sunday and Monday, we are seeing uh, 87 and 89. Have a great week and I'll see you here next week.